You want to know why our country is going to shit? It's because the public are the most reactionary mother of all time. Every single transaction, move, signing, release, cut that happens in the NFL is like the end of the fucking world. LaShaw McCoy signs with the Chiefs. Damian Williams, dead. Carlos Hyde goes to Houston. Duke Johnson, dead. We don't think before we act. As a, as a community, as a group of people, fantasy footballers, the fucking United States, the world, the human race is reactionary to a major fault. I am in group chats with five or six different fantasy football leagues, and every time something happens, like the LaShawn McCoy signing with the Chiefs, there is a reaction in every one of the chats. Think about the situation, all right? For this specifically, I want to talk about LaShawn McCoy. I want to talk about the Chiefs situation. LaShawn McCoy signs back with Andy Reid, right? The two have a history when they were playing together and coaching together in Philadelphia when LaShawn McCoy was in the prime of his career, of course. Let me move this shit out of the way. LaShawn McCoy is a shell of what he used to be. He is still elusive, but at this point, he's not full of burst. He's not going to provide you with the breakaway runs. He's not going to provide you with the juice, with the sauce that made Shady shady. So people ask, why would the Bills cut LaShawn McCoy. They saved about six and a half million dollars doing so. I'm not going to say it was the easiest thing to see, but the entire offseason, basically, we knew they were going to cut at least one or two of the newly signed backs they had between Yeldon, McCoy, Frank Gore. They drafted Devin Singletary in the third round. He was going to be a part of this backfield one way or another. We just didn't know where they were going to trim. They ended up moving on from McCoy because at this point in his career at age 31, 32, coming off of one of his worst statistical seasons, obviously running behind a poor offensive line and an offense that's below average last year, there was no reason to keep him around. They're not competing for a Super Bowl. LaShawn McCoy, even if they were, isn't going to be the piece that gets them there. So they might as well see what they have in the youth and the depth that they have behind him. Because at this point, if you think about who, who Shady is, right? And actually, the first time I ever watched Devin Singletary, my player comp for him was... LaShawn McCoy, because they're so damn elusive. They're so hard to bring down. Obviously, Singletary had a tough time at the Combine. His testing numbers came back very, very, very subpar, which made him drop a little bit in fantasy football rankings. However, LaShawn McCoy, now old, lacks the burst, lacks the speed. They're probably about the same player, because they both have elusiveness, but neither of them have the long 40 speed anymore. Neither of them have crazy burst or acceleration or anything like that. So there's no reason for the Bills to keep him on the roster when they have a LaShawn McCoy at the age of 22, right? That is my take on why they cut LaShawn McCoy to begin with. Obviously, he's at the downward slope of his career. He moves over to the Chiefs backfield, which has been a huge discussion of conversation throughout the offseason because Damian Williams burst out last year, last five games, six games of the season, including playoffs last year. He goes absolutely nuts. He scores, I think it was like 10 touchdowns. Most of this is just off the top of my fucking head, so I'm sorry if I'm not bringing you all the big facts right now. Damian Williams rips off, I want to say like 10 touchdowns in I think the six games that he played, which is a product of being that guy in this offense. Kareem Hunt, in the eight games that he played, I believe he scored 9, 10, 11 touchdowns as well. So the running back position in this Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reed offense is going to eat. Now, who is that guy? When I see LaShawn McCoy coming here, right? They trade Carlos Hyde to the Texans. He's out of the picture. So shout out to all y'all. Shout out to Animal who thought it was fucking Carlos Hyde season, you ignorant. LaShawn McCoy comes in. What does he do in my opinion? One, he basically takes Darrell Williams out of the conversation if you had any, for some reason you were hyping him for any reason. Darrell Williams out of the conversation. This hurts Darwin Thompson far more than it hurts Damian Williams in my opinion. This is Damian Williams' backfield still. The problem with you guys as fantasy footballers had this notion that Damian Williams was a good second round pick. He was never a good second round pick, even when the offseason started. In my opinion, like he is one of the riskiest players within the top three rounds of fantasy drafts right now. My overall strategy is to minimize risk in the beginning rounds, usually rounds one, two, three, four, and then shoot for upside after that. Damian Williams is an upside play with a ton of risk. And there are a ton of players that are risky in the third, the fourth round. But I would argue, um, actually, we'll stick with the third round because once it gets to the fourth round, all the running backs are super risky. But Damian Williams is probably not going to drop into the fourth round in most of your drafts if you're drafting in a 12-team league because that's 36 picks. So I don't think he's going to go after pick 40. The problem with Williams is I think if you're looking at the running back landscape in the third round, he becomes the riskiest player. He has the most outs of all the running backs there to bust, right? You could look at Carrion Johnson. You could look at Aaron Jones. Those guys, Damian Williams could lose or bust through a, a lot of different number of ways. One, the injury. He's already been dealing with a hamstring injury. So that is a concern. If he misses more time... The leash on where Damian Williams is, is very, very short. 
And that's what you don't get from these other running backs, right? There's no shot that if Kerryon Johnson gets hurt for two weeks, comes back, he loses his starting role. That's just not that's not the case, right? Because Kerryon and Aaron Jones are by far and away the most talented backs in their backfield. I would argue that Damian Williams definitely is as well. However, the talent behind him is definitely better than what we see in Detroit. Behind him, it's CJ Anderson and Ty Johnson. Green Bay, it's Jamal Williams, Dexter Williams. So there's nothing really behind either of those guys. So yes, both of them have injury risks but neither of them are on a short leash like Damian Williams is. Overall, they are all risky, but I would say that Damian Williams has a risk factor in almost every aspect of his game. Like there are so many outs in which he could end up being a bust, whether it's getting into a running back by committee, getting hurt because he's already been hurt this off season, um, which would put him on a very short leash. What if he loses, you know, pass catching work to Shady McCoy, which is something I could see happening. However, the argument for Damian Williams is this. One, I mean, they've been hyping him all offseason, right? He is the guy. I have no doubt about that. Um, as long If he could stay healthy, I do imagine him being the workhorse in this backfield. The thing that makes it so valuable is just the sheer number of fucking points that this Chiefs offense is going to score. And he's going to be the goal line back there. You have Darwin Thompson, who's like 200 pounds. You have Shady, who's probably about 205, 210 pounds at this point in his career. Damian Williams is built like a workhorse, 220, 225 pounds. He's going to be the guy used inside the five-yard line. And as I mentioned before, he scored so many touchdowns in that short period. And it wasn't fluky because we saw Kareem Hunt do the same thing. And we see these running backs in this Kansas City offense do the same thing year over year over year. Their touchdown floor and upside is immense and that's going to be Damian Williams' role so there's a very wide range of outcomes for what Damian Williams can do but even if he ends up touching the ball 200 times he'll lead the backfield in touches but I also think that he is a very good bet to score double digit touchdowns so you look at some of these other backs that are going maybe like a Josh Jacobs Josh Jacobs' best case scenario is probably 250 touches but he's not going to sniff 10 touchdowns in this Raiders offense so give me Damian Williams over a guy like Josh Jacobs when he might have a little bit of a lower workload, but they involve their running backs in the passing game. Their running backs score an enormous amount of touchdowns. So the way I'm looking at this is Damian Williams for me, was he, I always thought he was a bad second round pick. He started to become a guy I would take a shot on in the third round. Now, hopefully this moves his draft position back to the end of the third, even early fourth. And that is where I'll be willing to take him. Assuming that, you know, he's I don't want him as my RB1. I would hope that you snagged a uh, top running back either in the first or second round. That would give you a little bit of leverage or leeway in order to draft a guy like him. Because you're putting your team at very, very high risk if you are drafting him as your RB1. Because again, there's a lot of ways that he could end up busting for your team. But I think the key takeaway here is don't overreact to these moves. Duke Johnson is still a great pick in Houston. People are gonna be like, oh, Carlos Hyde's a big body guy. Like, whatever. We don't need Duke Johnson running into the back of the lineman. We don't need him to be a three down workhorse. He will still lead the backfield in touches. This Houston offense, like, you look at, oh my God, like, Carlos Hyde's gonna be the goal line back there. Dude, they don't score fucking rushing touchdowns from the five yard line. One, they have Deshaun Watson running the ball. Two, DeAndre Hopkins, I tweeted this out yesterday. DeAndre Hopkins is literally their goal line back. When they are within the five yard line, they pass the ball, they throw the ball to DeAndre Hopkins. Lamar Miller had what, like, 200 and fucking 20 carries last year? and scored five rushing touchdowns. You ready? I'm going to read these numbers off to you. 2016, Lamar Miller, 268 attempts, five rushing touchdowns. 2017, 238 attempts, three rushing touchdowns. 2018, 210 rushing attempts, five rushing touchdowns. They don't have a big body back that they're feeding on the goal line, y'all. Over the last three seasons, with Lamar Miller there, under Bill O'Brien, Houston, inside the 10-yard line, fourth highest rate of passing plays, 56%. And that factors in Deshaun Watson running the ball. So I'm sure 10% of those run plays were Deshaun Watson, which would probably mean if we're talking about percentages of run rate for the running backs, it would be the lowest in the NFL. That is the way the team works. I don't know why I'm on talking even about Carlos Hyde anymore. No one gives a shit about Carlos Hyde. The fact of the matter is, stop overreacting to shit that doesn't matter. Make sure you put everything into context. Duke Johnson is going to play a huge role in this offense. Even if he gets 12 carries a game, he's one of the most efficient runners in the NFL. He's been one of the most efficient runners on one of the worst teams in Cleveland over the last three, four years, however long he's been in the damn NFL at this point. Now he's going to be running behind Deshaun Watson. They just added a left tackle in a ridiculous trade that I'm not even going to get into people overreacting about that trade and how, oh my God, they gave up two first round picks. People undervalue real talented players. Laramie Tunsil, proven left tackle. That's only going to get better and better and better. And now they have him locked or they're going to have him locked up to protect Deshaun Watson's backside for the next 
five years. But yeah, you can go fucking miss on your first round picks, which is like 60% miss rate anyways in the NFL. I just, I, I don't even know. At this point, it's fucking 7 a.m. in the morning. I was walking around my, my neighborhood looking for a place that opened, coffee shop that was open at like 6 a.m. this morning. I couldn't find a damn spot. And then you remember that song? I'm a new soul, I came to this strange world thinking I could- That came on. Um, I think it's literally called New Soul. Yal Naim. Remember that shit? That shit came on and I was like, damn, life is good. Let's go talk some shit about LaShawn McCoy. So, to wrap this up, Damian Williams becomes an interesting late third round pick, early fourth round pick, because he's going to be great value there. I still 100% believe he is the back to own in this backfield. If I'm picking a backup to him, I'm probably... I'm, I'm, both backups are probably off my board, to be honest. One of these guys is going to end up on the waiver wire. Someone's going to draft Shady. Someone's going to draft Darwin Thompson. Within a week or two, we're going to know who the RB2 is here. One of them's going to get like three touches over the first three games, going to get dropped. Then you can go pick up that guy because still like the New England Patriots backfield, you never know who's going to emerge. There's just as good of a chance of that guy who was dropped ending up as the RB. But Damian Williams, as of right now, is the only running back I want to own because his touchdown upside is still going to be there. He's still going to be the goal line guy. They score so many many damn touchdowns from within the five yard line and there's no way it's going to be anyone besides Damian Williams so have hope if you drafted Damian still if you want to grab Darwin or LaShawn McCoy in like the 12th fucking round or later I'm okay with it but don't don't start reaching into like the seventh eighth round for either of these guys Duke Johnson still interesting to me in the sixth or seventh round Kiki QT banged up I know Kenny Stills just got transferred over but guys we're like four days before the start of the season learning an entire new offense is not that easy is he going to be using the slot i don't know it's probably more protection for will fuller who is eight months removed from his acl tear and kiki qt is already banged up so it's not like stills is taking over that slot role i mean he might play the slot in the beginning of the season but he is not a slot receiver he's a downfield threat just like will fuller so I see him more as like the wide receiver three, four, if they need some depth there. So Duke Johnson is still going to play heavily in the slot, which is where Deshaun Watson targets like 20 to 22% of his throws, even though he's never even had a fucking slot receiver before. So that's my take. Good morning. It's Sunday. Stop fucking yelling. Tuck your shirts in. Hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Make sure you cop the draft guide. If you still got some of your season long drafts, yo, we got the big dogs draft guide with all of the best information that I could possibly put out throughout the summer on BigDogsDraftGuide.com. My rankings, my tiers. Patreon is where you'll find my in-season exclusive content, though. My weekly rankings. It's the only place I put out my weekly rankings to help you with your sit starts. We have an active community and forum on Patreon, which I just allowed FB God, Animal, and Snacks onto. So us between us four, you will get your sit starts and your waiver wires and all that shit answered on Patreon. And I will also, I will not be doing a waiver wire video weekly. I will be doing an exclusive waiver wire blog post, which will only go up on Patreon, as well as a private live stream every Saturday for Patreon members. So there's a lot of shit that y'all Patreons are getting throughout the season. Make sure you go sign up, patreon.com slash BDGE. I will see y'all in tomorrow's video. Ooh, we got the vlog coming out tomorrow. The big dog's got to eat NYC draft vlog. We out. I love you. Goodbye. Hey!